those who were given the book till they pay the poll tax of their own accord and act submissive, that is humiliated. Kill them, it says. Where has the verse gone that says, you have your religion and I have mine? And all such things that we hear in the media nowadays. Whenever they talk about Christians, they say, we believe that you have your religion and we have ours. And we are not supposed to argue with you, unless in the politest manner. But where has the verse of the sword gone? The one that abrogated. The scholars of abrogation say that the verse of the sword, they call it the verse of the sword, has abrogated 124 verses. So you have 124 verses in the Quran. Yes, but they are null and void. Isn't it possible that they would claim those verses are still effective and it is rather the verse of the sword that has been abrogated? Is it possible or is what you are saying certain according to the Muslim scholars? You know, there is a rule in the Quran which is worth mentioning too. It says that verses that come later abrogate verses coming prior to them. Namely, Surah 9, al toba abrogated the verses preceding it. Surah 9, al toba for your knowledge, according to Muhammad, is the last surah that has been sent down to him, the last one of all. It is the only surah that does not have in the name of the merciful and mercy-giving God as a heading. It was the last one, and after that, he died. Not done yet. We've already spoken about that whose writing has been abrogated and whose ruling is still effective and that whose ruling has been abrogated and whose writing still remains, and now remains the third type whose writing and rulings altogether have been abrogated, both together. That has been entirely removed from the copies, right? It's been completely removed. From the copies of the Quran and from the rulings. <laughs> Such as in a book by Gamal al-Din ibn al-Juzi about the abrogating verses in the Quran, page 33. He says that a companion woke up during the night and tried to recall a verse that the messenger told them it was revealed to him and he could only remember of it the part saying in the name of the merciful and mercy giving God. So he betook himself, went to the prophet in the morning in order to ask him. But he found a crowd as well there. And upon asking them about what they want, they answered, It is about the verse that the Prophet mentioned yesterday. We forgot it. He said, The same thing happened to me. I forgot it as well. They said, Okay, let's ask the Prophet. So when the Prophet came, they asked him. And it says, This book says so. He spent an hour till he answered. He was also trying to remember the verse, and he couldn't recall it. And it comes back to whatever verse we cancel or cause to be forgotten. We provide one better than it, or at least something similar to it. That is the principle of abrogation. Whatever verse we cancel or cause to be forgotten, we provide one better than it, or at least something similar to it. And this is originally the principle of abrogation in the Quran. So he forgot it, not just forgot it, and said so, but after a whole hour of silence, he said to them, God has already abrogated it last night. And that's why it has been cancelled from all of their minds. <laughs> and from the Quran and from the rulings. Are you following? It has been totally nullified. Aisha says that Surah 33, Al-Ahzab, used to be 200 verses when the Prophet Muhammad narrated to them. Surah 33, Al-Ahzab, it used to be 200 verses. But in the copy of Uthman, only 73 verses of those remain. So where has this huge number gone? non-existent. It has been abrogated, both in ruling and in writing. Are you following? Umar ibn al-Khattab said, and his words are recorded and are in all the books about abrogation, as well as in this book. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, Would you please repeat the name of the reference so that our dear viewers would be able to refer to it? Gamal al-Din ibn al-Juzi and Nawasikh al-Quran and Abu Ghafr al-Nahas also, his book is called Al-Nasikh wal Mansukh. What does Omar say? A lot of the Quran has disappeared. Non-existent. You can also find this in Al-Siyutis al atqan fi al Al-Quran, page 56. It's there. A lot of the Quran has disappeared. And it's no more there. Now, where has it gone? They say it has been abrogated. These, then, are the types of abrogation, all three of them. Okay, now we come to a very serious and important question. What is the danger about abrogation? Now you're talking. How dangerous is it? That's right. Someone may say, well, it doesn't really matter if they are there or not, whether they have been abrogated or not. Well, it is God's will. 
That's what the director wants. Do you have any problem with that? Well, no, you can't say, this is simply his will. Hold your horses. And how is that? Because this abrogation, this principle, conflicts with the statement in Surah 6, al anam verse 34, as well as many other verses, which state there's no way to change God's words. There is no way to alter God's words. So how can there be abrogating and abrogated verses, knowing that the abrogation is an alteration of verses? Does the Quran contradict itself? Are you following? So here is a clash. You are talking about abrogation. But if you claim that, that you will be clashing with another fact, which is there is no way to alter God's words. That's number one. Number two, another clash with Surah 85, Al-Baruj, verse 22 and 23, which say, Still it is a majestic Quran. It is preserved on a guarded tablet. So then, this preserved tablet, did it contain the abrogating and abrogated verses? Or the abrogating ones only? Or the abrogated ones only? Or does it itself contain clashes and contradictions? And does God, in this preserved tablet, not know the events that would transpire so that he would put this and replace it with that, then adapt it with this? Okay, when Muhammad forgot the verse, wasn't it in the preserved tablet? Couldn't Gabriel have reminded him of it? Once again, couldn't he have joggled his memory? So there is a clash. The issue cannot be simply solved. Anyone wanting to think with a 21st century mentality must, by necessity, grab hold with these issues. But if you want to follow the mentality of the Bedouins or the ignorant of the first Hijri century, then you can remain in their ignorance. Never mind being a fool, as long as you can make a living. Inconceivable. So the issue contains a clash. You know, it has a further clash with something else. Surah 15, Al-Hajr, verse 9, which says, We ourselves have sent down the reminder, just as we are safeguarding it. But what does safeguarding mean? You know what the commentators say about safeguarding? The commentators, though they really haven't got the awareness of the full dimensions of the issue, they only explain piecemeal, that is, preserving it from alteration, change, and modification. Well, isn't that what abrogation is all about? They say, no, they are completely two different issues. They didn't grasp the whole thing. The whole thing didn't click with them. You know what the problem is? Man should have a consolidating mentality. It is a must to consolidate this with that, this fact with that fact. But if you take this fact alone, and that fact by itself, you'll reach nowhere. We ourselves have sent down the reminder, just as we are safeguarding it. So how come its writing has been abrogated and its ruling remains? And how come its ruling can be abrogated and its writing remains? And how come both its writing and ruling can be abrogated if God is safeguarding it? So here is a clash and a collision. So if a man of intellect will discern and will think, what's the issue? What's the problem? And you know the issue of abrogating and abrogated verses until today remains unsolved. Until today the scholars of abrogation have written about it and it has no solution at all. Now pay close attention to the danger, to this, the more powerful danger, the more powerful one. In Surah 4, Al-Nisa, verse 82, where it says, If it had come from some other source than God, they would have found a great deal of contradiction in it. Yes, the verse once again, if it had come from some other source than God, they would have found a great deal of contradiction in it. And the reference, also the verse again. Surah 4, al nasa verse 82. Okay. If it had come from some other source than God. Today, if you find much contradiction, what will the results be? That it isn't from God. Ah, that it is not from God. Oh, here is the crux of the problem that they must face. Okay, if it had a great deal of contradictions by the testimony of the scholars of abrogation, there are 71 surahs of the Qur'an of a total of 114 that contain abrogation. And that's a great deal of contradiction. They would have found a great deal of contradiction in it. Here it is, 62.28.